So you're new to the world of flight planning. You're confused on some terminology, not sure where to begin, or maybe you already know but just need a quick refresher course before your check ride or next activity with your instructor. In this video we will discuss lines of latitude and longitude, true course, true heading, magnetic course, magnetic heading, as well as give some insight on pilotage and dead reckoning. These white lines you see represent lines of latitude and longitude. On the sectional, they appear as black lines with tick marks. If you're having trouble differentiating the lines, think of it this way. A ladder may be the best example for this. The rungs of the ladder, the horizontal lines, represent latitude, and the vertical portion represents longitude. The first thing we need to do is grab a plotter, a sectional, and decide where we want to go. Let's say we choose our departure airport as Raleigh-Durham and our destination airport as Moore County. Let's check the distance between both points. In this case, as you can see, the distance from Raleigh to Moore County is approximately 48 nautical miles. Next, we need to find out our true course. To do this, we are simply going to line up the plotter with the course we have drawn. Make sure the plotter is lined up with the longitudinal line on the sectional. As you can see, if we follow the longitudinal line through the course plotter to the outer scale, our true course from Raleigh to Moore County is 218 degrees. Now we need to find our magnetic course. To do this, we have to either add or subtract any deviations, otherwise known as isogonic lines, from our course. As you can see here, we have a western magnetic deviation of 9 degrees west. Since west is best, we add 9 degrees to our true course, which gives us a magnetic course of 227 degrees. It's that simple. Now all we have to do is calculate how the winds will affect our flight along the route and we are left with our magnetic heading for the flight. Now that we have that covered, let's talk a little bit about checkpoints. Check examiners love to scrutinize how far apart your checkpoints are spaced. We recommend placing checkpoints anywhere from 10 to 15 nautical miles apart. For our first checkpoint, we use a lake. It's big, filled with water, and just plain hard to miss. From the lake, our next checkpoint is going to be Raleigh Exec. If you're going the right way, it shouldn't be difficult to miss an airport right in the middle of your flight path. Once we pass Exec, there aren't too many other landmarks in the area, so we're going to have to use some intersecting roads that you can see on the sectional. In addition to the roads, just to make sure we are headed the right way, there should be an antenna off to your right extending from the surface up to 840 feet MSL. Next stop, Moore County Airport. While we're on the subject, what you just did there is called pilotage. All pilotage is, is simply picking a landmark off your sectional and then comparing that to what you see from the air. Dead reckoning on the other hand gets a bit more complicated. Based on computations of airspeed, heading, course, ground speed, and wind direction. In simpler terms, it's figuring out where the aircraft is in relation to where it has been. 